latest NSA leaks outline a massive program against internet encryption. So did we lose the crypto wars? Is PGP secure? What can you trust? That and more this segment of Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by Podio. Bull Run, it's the NSA program that everybody has been talking about. I was just recently on Techzilla talking about this. Uh, personally, I love the NSA. They have the shiniest shoes. It's on uh, Tech News Today. I agree with Schneier, to, to quote him directly. He says, the US has proved to be an unethical steward of the internet. The UK's no better. We're gonna be doing a uh, episode of ThreatWire about this. And I'm not here to tell you a bunch of fear, uncertainty, and doubt about you know, speculations of whether the NSA has, you know, modified encryption programs to make them more exploitable or work in, you know, back doors with industry partners or uh, otherwise, you know, do nefarious things with standards bodies. Uh, interesting stuff about random number generators from Intel named Bull Mountain. Sounds kind of familiar. Anyway, we're not going to do that speculating. What we are rather going to do is focus on properly implementing strong crypto because that was the takeaway. The important takeaway here is that, and to quote Edward Snowden directly, encryption works. Properly implemented strong crypto systems are one of the few things that you can rely on. Unfortunately, endpoint security is so terrifically weak that NSA can frequently find ways around it. Now, that's the thing, is why bother spending millions of dollars in supercomputers to try to, bra bra uh, break, bra to break a private key when you can simply bypass it. Uh, you guys know how I feel about encryption. It's like encrypt all the things. You should be doing it whether it's your cat photos or your plans for world domination. I wish this whole world that we all use PGP for everything um, and everybody should be using it. It's, it's not necessarily hugely convenient, but then again, security and convenience have been at odds with each other for forever. Uh, so with that said, let's take a look back at some of the stuff that we've talked about previously about PGP and encryption. Of course, we're talking about email encryption here, pretty good privacy way back in the early 90s, the original crypto wars, and we won and were allowed to use this really cool uh, technology that really does a damn good job of keeping our emails safe and properly implemented. Now, back in the 90s, the scene was totally different, okay? We used Pine and Elm and Eudora and Pegasus and Outlook. I guess people still use Outlook. But the norm was that you would have an email client and either through a protocol like POP3 or IMAP or whatever have you, it would pull your email down from the server and it would live on your machine. Um, and when you properly implement cool stuff like, you know, PGP with, I don't know, Enigmail and Thunderbird, stuff is really cool, but that's not the world that most of us live in now. See, because we're in such a culture of convenience, webmail has taken over. And for that reason, obviously, it's great for folks like the NSA that, that want to target the big four, the Facebook, Yahoo, Google. Um, who's the other one? I don't remember. Oh, Outlook.com. Duh, Hotmail, Microsoft. They even built a backdoor right in for uh, the NSA. Uh, aren't those guys so sweet? Anyway, so you can imagine why, you know, it's such a great thing for those kinds of people that we all just go ahead and rely on the cloud, which is okay. You know, ultimately all of this discussion is about trust. Uh, and so, you know, that's why we're going to kind of dive into where is the trust? So in a segment on uh, season 14, episode 10, Shannon and I talked about Mailvelope because it integrates with these solutions. And to be honest, it is the easiest solution for me to recommend for people to get started with the whole concept of public private key encryption to get started with PGP because it is at least as convenient as I've ever seen it. And mind you, convenience and security, right? So, you know, I've been using it for a while. It integrates really well. It does have a couple of problems, I will say, um, you know, and I, I'm sure since the beautiful thing is it's open source, it's built on open standards like open PGP using awesome like, you know, JavaScript implementations. Uh, it's really only a matter of time before some of these caveats get solved. Uh, some of which are uh, the inability to do signing of messages, which would be really cool. Uh, in fact, we're going to get into message signing here real soon. Uh, it also doesn't support revocation certificates. So say you're, you were to lose your laptop with your private key, you can't trust it anymore, but you had already put it up on a key server. I think we talked about using the MIT key server. We're big fans of that. 
um, you don't have a, a good way to, to generate a revocation certificate so that you can pull that down. And as Mubix pointed out on this very show, Milvelop doesn't take advantage of all of the opportunities for encryption and for security that it really could. And that's the thing about the game of you know, encryption, the game of like, hey, let's actually maintain our privacy through technology. And, and that is use everything at your disposal. Uh, while Mavlope does a really good job of bringing this kind of stuff to the masses, it doesn't take advantage of, as Mubix pointed out, the ability of the browser, of the Chrome extension, to actually use a um, an encrypted storage volume. Rather, it keeps your private key in plain text in a SQL database, which many would say is the same as every other program under the sun. But that's no reason not to implement you know, everything at your disposal. Now, Thomas O on YouTube uh, actually made a really intelligent comment to this effect. He says, this shows a local attack. What is not shown in the episode is that the same attack would also be possible with other PGP implementations. Take GPG. If you have local access, you can simply do a GPG, TAC, TAC, export, TAC, secret, TAC, key, TAC, A, and get the private key in clear text. This is a good encouragement to further improve Mailvelope, but it would have been fair to see the exploit in a wider perspective. If your machine gets owned, there's no encryption that can help you anyway. And that's really important because it's really about talking about where our trust is, right? If your machine gets owned, nothing's going to save you, right? And you, yes, do still need the passphrase to use that private key. However, it's not to say that we don't need to immediately revoke it because we've been owned if we even knew that we got owned. Uh, the example here is to show that, hey, you know, even, you know, even though the attacker may have compromised the machine and pulled off the, the plain text uh, private key, he still does need to crack it. And so your first thought would be like, oh, great, let's fire up a copy of John the Ripper and try an offline brute force attack on the passphrase, which kind of leads into a rat hole discussion about why really good passphrases are important. But rather, I, I, I should even mention that, you know, the thing about this is, and the thing that Snowden was saying about endpoint security is, it doesn't matter how secure that passphrase is. If we've already owned the machine, well, then why are we trying to crack a key when we could just implement keystroke recording? You're going to type the password in at some point, and at that point, we've got it. So that's why this is really you know not just uh, there's no solution i can't just say you should trust this it works right because it's really about deciding where your trust is and um and there's measures that we can take and actually that the nsa takes themselves to make this better uh bodyman 72 also pointed out you know no big deal if someone has access to your computer you have a bigger problem oh absolutely he says use whole disk encryption well, absolutely. That's a great point. You should use full disk encryption. But again, it won't save you in this scenario because, you know, as soon as the attacker implements a keystroke recorder, they've got the passphrase when you type it in and Bob's your uncle. So let's take a few steps back. OK, PGP is really good at a lot of things. OK, first of all, it implements awesome crypto algorithms that are publicly known. That's not the private thing. The, the private thing is your private key. You know, you can give your public key out to everyone. You can use, you know, uh, whatever cipher you choose. What makes it secure is that the private, secu private key is kept secure, you know, with your passphrase, with that symmetric encryption. And the pass in as long as you're using a good passphrase, it should be good. But again, why break those keys when you can steal the keystrokes? You know, do you trust every single aspect of your machine? You know, as this discussion gets into the mainstream with things like Bull Run and, you know, people talk about the fact that, well, yeah, actually, uh, Microsoft has worked directly with the NSA and both operating systems and Outlook.com, the, uh, the mail provider to provide unencrypted copies of messages, woohoo, and, um, and things of that nature, you, you have to ask yourself, well, what do you trust? And this is not me saying, OK, everyone must compile Gen2 from source and line by line go through every uh, line of code and, uh, you know, invent, uh, you know, install, uh, you know, GPG from source and all of those things. Right. There, there has to be, you know, like convenience is literally at odds with security in this case. But uh, consider this. The NSA actually operates on the assumption that is has, in fact, been compromised and then it works from there so uh, you know mind you it takes a lot of effort to maintain privacy 
And I'm not telling you that this method we're about to talk about is the one you should trust. In fact, I'm not telling you, I mean, honestly, trust is something that you need to decide. Nobody can tell you to trust it. You have to figure that out for yourself. But we're going to talk about one method that I believe could add a lot of security to any PGP implementation. And we're gonna get into that real soon here on this brand new machine as soon as we get back. Hey, Paul, check this out. Dude, come here, you gotta see this. I am so stoked. I'm getting ready to uh, head over to Minneapolis in the next round of Hack Across America. And I'm doing some upgrades on the van. Actually, to be honest, some of the things kind of fell apart. I wouldn't say fell apart, but I'm not so happy with uh, this thing. So this is actually the giant vent thing that goes on the roof. And I figured this would be a perfect opportunity since I just got the replacement in to show you the thing that I'm using to keep track of my entire Hack Across America project because you guys know that the fine folks over at Citrix hooked me up with all the tools I need, including Podio. Check this out. So I built an app here in Podio that I use to maintain all of the different parts that I purchased when I did, the price I got them, the vendor that I got them from, so I can go in here and actually see like everything that it took to make the van in its current state and do a little searchy searchy action here on the vent and find out there's my fantastic vent and I can go ahead and uh, you know find myself a nifty little replacement over here or whatever else it is I may need. This is the coolest stuff. I haven't just been using it even for Hack Across America because so many workspaces in here. We're using it for uh, development of the Wi-Fi Pineapple, for the Hack Shop, for so many different things. Um, it's really amazing collaboration stuff. I, I wish that we had this uh, years ago because I remember as a systems administrator being asked by uh, one of our you know I uh, one of our higher ups to like put together basically an internal corporate intranet style like of uh, social network and this this uses a lot of context that people are already used to using with like you know the feeds and stuff like that so I just thought that this would be the greatest opportunity to show you how I'm using it. I'm so stoked that I have everything here in a database. Uh, all the people that have signed up on Hack Across America so I can plot them on a map and sort them and things like that and kind of figure out where we're going next. And uh, yeah, so if you're looking for some project management software, uh, you know, software that you can bring into your organization, all cloud hosted and stuff like that, where, you know, you can just create apps like on the fly. Like I just built this one, no problem. Um, this is the coolest stuff. You should check it out at podio.com. And uh, of course, thank you guys for sponsoring Hack Across America. This week's Technolust Photo of the Week comes from Silver Moonshine, which sounds kind of delicious. Or maybe not. You had a problem with the Big Bang. Yeah. I caught so this on the forums. So what is this in regards to? I caught this on the forums and I had to send this by because I think this is fantastic and I have so much sympathy because I have been there, man. He says, he made a huge error. I was trying to hook up a battery pack to my pineapple, so I went out and got a 12 volt lead acid and then he made the mistake. Ooh. He thinks he switched the positive and the negative. Oh. And this right here, that my friend is what it looks like when you let out the magic smoke. So the original button yes. right there, teeny tiny. This is actually screen. careful. This is the very first pineapple dev board. I'm being careful. Serial number I'm one. I'm being careful. So this is the very first little button. Yeah, it, well, <laughs> it, uh, the very first it's, and yeah, it's supposed it's to be nice and pretty and silver. Button. Look, just be careful when you Take out the big lead acid guys that the red is the positive and the black is the negative and Apparently. you want it to be center positive. So sorry about that dude. Uh, we actually sound silver moonshine uh, another board. So that's cool. Yes. We're so cool. silver, if you're still in the forums, let us know if you were able to, if you were bold enough to unsolder the uh, voltage regulator and all the other parts that let out their lab magic smoke and solder on new ones. I would just switched over to the new board, but uh, I'd that just switch is, over if it was me. <laughs> that is quite a feat. Listen, you can send your photos over to feedback at hack5.org. Make sure to include Technolust in the subject line. Maybe we'll feature yours on the show. <laughs>